welcome to an extreme episode of Expedition Jack. Well, call it extreme, it's like level one extreme. Um, this is my first time ever going out or challenging myself in uh, severe weather warning conditions. It's only a yellow weather warning, but I'm here today in the Peak District. I am round Wynn Hill, just north of Castleton. But it was snowing a lot more than this when I just drove in. But yeah, we're going to challenge ourselves and challenge my ability and all my kit to see how cold it can get because it's only minus two now. Uh, it's set to snow a lot more today into the night, but tonight it's going to go down to minus five. So we'll see how it goes. Lift your eyes off the ground, you've only begun. So I've just made it up to Lady Bower Reservoir. Pretty impressive. All these reservoirs were uh, made in around 1912, around wartime. And this supplies all the water source for the surrounding cities and everywhere. Uh, the Peak District is very well situated in the centre of the country. Uh, so for the Midlands on both east and west. But um, this is the first one. Then there's, I think it's Derwent Reservoir. And then there's Howden Reservoir. And I'm not sure if I think there's a few more little ones, but I can't remember the names. So today, as you can see, I'm pretty well kitted up. I'm in my, uh, my ducky coat to keep me warm. What I'm doing is I'm bringing all my heavy gear. I've bought all the luxuries like my big axe, even my big tripod, which I don't normally take with me. Just going to see how it goes because it's only about a 30 minute hike from the car. I'm spending more time talking to you guys. <laughs> but yeah, it's just an experimental phase for me um, to see what works. These gloves are cool. I've actually modded them. So I can actually clip them on my belt and stuff. Yeah, like I say, it's minus two, gonna drop down to minus five tonight. Got a new sleeping bag, which I've been using a few times. Always been sweaty in the night because it's too good. It's, it's one of these really good ones ducked down from uh, China, literally half or a third of the price of the ones here and it's the same thing. So it's just a taster, taster test day. And I want to be doing a lot more of this in the future. So let's get to it. Well, I've made it to the winter wonderland. My water source is just there. I'm following it up here. And then off this path, I'm going to diverge from it. What's that? Looks like an old barn or something. Oh wow, I didn't know it was derelict. I thought it was used. That's cool. Found a landmark. I love it! All the snow. Right. If you can hear it, that's my water source that I've been following. Here's a barn. Let's go and have a look at that. That tree's fallen over it. Looks like people have camped in here before. Left some stuffs. that tree. This is a really old one. To do windows like that, that's really old style. Not too sure what this is for. You see these where the struts would be, the beams across. So it's a two-story uh, barn. Barn come cottage come whatever it was. This is cool. Looks like um, they've just planted all these. These are quite young. So I need to go further that way, I think, to get into the big trees over there. Yeah, so let's continue hunting. Nice find, really nice find. Tomorrow, it's too cloudy today to see anything with the drone, but I've bought my new drone. It's smaller, more lightweight, compact. But uh, tomorrow it's going to be glorious sunshine. It's colder tomorrow. It's going to remain about four, minus four uh, in the morning all the way through to noon. But 
it's going to be a beautiful clear sky and that's the time to get the drone up, not today. <coughs> and the snow will still be here, so why not just get the shots tomorrow? Sorted! It's so peaceful out here. Nothing. Now you see the snowfall up here compared to down there. There's the other peak in the cloud. And they've actually, you know the famous road um, Snake Pass for all the motorbikers? They like to go down there through Matlock, through the Peak District. That's been closed today, so that's how much snow is falling on Snake's Pass. Oh. But now I'm going to diverge from the, the safety of the path and go into the woods over there. I think I'm going to either head for that one over there where the tall trees are because I'm trying to keep it to the water source. The water source is this side. I could go over there. There's definitely a space to camp over there and some flat ground, but that's going away from my water source. Um, I plan to use some of the snow, test the snow out and boil some of that, but uh, that's going to be a pain to use all the time because I'm boiling a lot of stuff for cooking later. So it'll be handy to have water source on tap. I should have really waxed my trousers. You know, these full Raven trousers, you can, um, Wax them. I did that before, I got super sweaty, but I wish I did it now because um pretty wet just walking through the brush. But it's all a learning curve, I'll see I'll see how it goes because um later, later I'm not promising, but I bought all the stuff to actually do natural fire. Obviously the snow in the UK is proper wet snow, it's not like um the Arctic Circle snow where it's dust, powder snow, dry snow. So we'll have to see if it's uh, feasible. All the wood looks pretty damp, but I'm going to try and use some of Paul Kirtley's techniques. Get some logs, whack them open, see if there's any dry stuff on the inside. That is the pinnacle of Wynn Hill just there. That's where we'll go tomorrow. And I'm just scouting out what I could use for a fire. Because I am notoriously bad at fire making. And especially in this sort of condition. I haven't done it in this condition. I'm going to use what I've learned, but obviously practice makes perfect. And I haven't been practicing because I haven't been out enough. But I'm just taking out, these are on the ground. They might be wet, but they might be worth a shot, I don't know. And there's loads of these dry, dead standing logs, like, still in the ground. They might be worth a shot, because I bought a saw with me. Chop a log off that, and uh, split that. That might be my best bet. this lovely enclosed bit so people on Wind Hill in the morning if there's some early buds up there they can't see me but I've got myself a sofa a natural seat which I'm gonna put the uh, the Dutch poncho as a tarp over on this tree that tree that tree and then somewhere in that whatever I can get my hands on basically so I've got cover over my seat and then that's where I'll do my fire. Only a small fire, what's necessary. Then I'll have my tent just there. Is a bit more of a slant than that, but it works for me. And then up here, we have another dead standing wood, which is uh, clinging onto another tree. We've got more wood actually around here, even that one holding itself up. But this one is in much better condition than the last. This is actually dry on this side, so it is definitely, definitely a goer. It's just how I'm going to get that down without uh, killing myself. <laughs> I might go for that one over there. But yeah, this is a good spot. And then in the morning I'll head up to Wind Hill. Don't think I'll bother with the water source. See how I go with the snow. Not some of this glorious snow, but I've heard that because it contains air and stuff, a full pot of snow will only give you a third of water, so I'll try it out. So I'm gonna gonna set up, probably got about half an hour left of, left of light. It's all cool though. Hey, I've got a, a brilliant, I've got one of those lanchans, and then that's why I bought the walking poles. I don't normally use walking poles for stuff like this. That'll be the tent poles for the tent. And it's a beautiful white color, and it will blend into the landscape, so no one will know I'm here. And then the, the poncho is camouflage. So that'll blend in with the trees. 
So the only thing they'll really see is the fire. So that's the plan. But it's just so pretty and quiet for once because where we live, there's a it's on a flight path. So the roar of uh, aeroplane engines go over all the time. Before it really hurt my ears, but now I'm just used to it. That's why I have to get outdoors more. There you go, one Dutch army poncho as a top. Just got to tether these out of the way. These are like the, uh, the the pull tags to cinch it in. And sometimes, I haven't got anything to do that with today, but um, you get the hood, you wrap that up and you can do like a pyramid style. So it's lifted away. This is my first attempt at this. It seems pretty all right. If it does snow, I reckon it would accumulate in the middle might make these a bit higher so a bit of a, a slant to go off the edge but nice thing about Dutch army poncho is that the bag that it comes in is attached to it you can store things in this bag if you need to so there you go there's the ferroman's knot all cinched tight and it's adjustable so it's really good time for a brew I think time for a cuppa Now this is uh, what I got just before Christmas. Titanium pot, but it's half the price when you buy it from China. So get it from China. <laughs> it's ti titanium, I think it's a hundred milliliter, that version. But I chose this one because it's got the bale handle. If I ever do a fire and hang it over and safety precaution. So I can actually get to it. And it's all self-contained. All my cut kit is in this now. Because before I used the Tran Tangier set, cook set, which is still fantastic. I'll still use that when there's like two of us or whatever. But if it's me solo hiking, this is all I'll take and just good to boil water, do what I like in it. So I got this uh, cheap crappy pot stand because people said it's uh, better, better to do that. Uh, scrubber. Char cloth. Keep that here actually. My silicone cup. These are fantastic. They're very lightweight. It's only a metal rim and then it's all silicon, but these can take hot water and everything. Very, very good. And it stops things from rattling around. And then I've got the small extreme gas canister. I'm trying this out. I mean, it's rated down to minus 27. I think it's a bit overkill for here, but um, I want to make sure it works. <laughs> then my uh, lighter. That Lily got me for Christmas. Just makes life easier. Um, I have bought my striker anyway, but um, depends how much time, the amount of work it takes to process that big dead tree. Maybe, never know. But I'm gonna start off uh, just make myself a tea. Got some liquids back in me. Actually, I might use the snow for that. And also, forgot to mention, a BRS lightweight stove. Very lightweight, but does the job. Oh, see that gas? Didn't realize it was turned on.
Oh. So this is what I've got for my delights tonight. This is the MX3 Adventure. Um, some French brand, but um, my good friends at Bush Gear have given me these. It's a spaghetti bolognese, pasta bolognese. But they're great because they're, they're the dried ones. So it's not the liquefied ones. You just add water and you use this. You eat out of this. It's only uh, 125 gram. Rehydrated is 375. So it's saving you half the weight of carrying in the moisture. So you just add the moisture back in. And the nice design of this is you tear off this middle section and you can eat it out like a bowl. Very, very handy, very genius. I recommend it. There's a link in the description if you want to go and find out all about it and where to get it from. That's what it looks like on the inside. Just dried pasta with some flavouring. It smells nice. Let's see if your water's ready. So that's nice and boiled, that is. You have to do it up to a certain line and on this it indicates you should do it up to number four. You reseal it and you let it rehydrate for about 10 to 15 minutes. Stir it around a bit. Then for later, I've got the vanilla custard. I think this is just custard in a bag. Just thought I'd give it a stir to get all that flavouring out. Yeah, I do recommend these, but they are quite expensive if you uh, have them all the time. So probably just keep it for when you go on a big hike or something. I'm still experimenting with them because um, yeah, I haven't had much experience with them. I normally do uh, camp cooking, <laughs> which you can watch here or here. Uh, proper, proper camp cooking with Lily. Well, I say I do it. I say we do it. I do the filming, she does the uh, cooking. <laughs> she does a fantastic job. And she cooks way more tastier food than I do. I cook Italian stuff, even though I'm not Italian, but seems like all British people know at least one Italian dish. So I think that's been doing for about four minutes now. Gone over about six, six minutes. Oh, that's good. Oh, should straighten up a bit. <laughs> should have set it higher, to be honest. But it's all right, it works. Do you know what? The crappy stabiliser is worth every penny. I mean, it was only 99 pence anyway, but it's worth every penny. Someone recommended it to me um, because I seen I was just using the can and the BRS. I think that was on the stove comparison video. It doesn't fit very well. You have to force it on, but if it works, it works. <laughs> I always have a rule. You always um, spend the money on the things that you need to rely on, like really rely on. So talk about camera kit or clothing. You need to really rely on it to work. So a camera, you need to rely on it every time that it's gonna work or, or get the effect you need. So put top dollar on that. But you always skimp money on say things like this things that don't really mean the world but it just makes your life easier so uh, in the camera world that will be rigging equipment or tripods stuff like that so say like these boots these don't have to cost the world these are just um old army surplus boots i'm really pleased i wore these because these are for the european british german weather german paratrooper boots really reinforced but yeah, these go right up, so I can wade through a lot of a lot of stuff. I love these boots. It's just that they're heavy, so they're great for a short hike today. I have done a lot longer hikes in them. Regretted it. I wore them when I went up and over Kinder Scout with Will. Really regretted it. It was like carrying two cement blocks on your feet. And the only mistake of that trip for me was uh, I carried too much heavy stuff. Half of it didn't need. Didn't need it should have skimped it, chucked it away. Even today, I'm carrying less, but I've taken more essentials. So like, I've got the tripod. That's such a luxury, have a tripod and sit and talk to you. And you know what? 10 to seven means my dinner's ready. Hopefully it hasn't cooled down on the ice. Yeah, that rehydrated meal, the bolognese was all right, actually. I've just put some uh, more snow in this for round two. Round three of a tea, but round two for dessert. The pud pud. I didn't realise it's actually quite early. It goes um, dark early anyway, like half four to five now. It's Jan, it's January. But I'm just so pleased I found snow. The first 
snow camp. That I've, that I've ever done, I mean, not that anyone's done. Because I've seen some people go up um, the Cairngorms. Cairngorms? Cairngorms? Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, in Scotland, and they go up to the the peaks and stuff, and it, oh, it looks phenomenal. Uh, some of those Scots guys, what they have on their doorstep. But you need your proper gear for up there. <laughs> like, that's why I say this is extreme expedition jet for level one. <laughs> that's probably like a level, I don't know, seven? Six? Because there's always more extreme. You go to Sweden, Norway, or uh, Arctic Circle, minus 30. That's the number that that screen in the camera, the digital screen at the back freezes and it will expand and break. Theoretically, I can keep filming until minus 30. I don't know if I should try that with this camera. It does really interest me how people go into different environments, these extreme environments, you know, like planet Earth and the type of gear they need to uh, get those shots and the film equipment needed. But it's not just the film equipment, that person to get that animal probably sitting there all day for a full week, two week, um, just waiting for something to happen in front of the lens, just sitting in a little pillbox or something out in the snow. That's crazy. I want to go further. Probably the furthest I'll go this year would be Wales uh, because we're going to meet a friend again called Craig, Craig Evans, uh, for some coastal foraging around Pembrokeshire and that the South Wales coastline is so dramatic, it's so spectacular, and it's all free food. That's the thing. This foraging lot, a lot of people don't know they can eat that or eat this. And what surprised me the most is I had no interest in the plants. I only had interest in the animals and the seafood because that's what I thought was coastal foraging. But I've heard of foraging of plants before, but it didn't really interest me until I went along with Craig Evans. I looked at a whole bush in the estuary, loads of different plants there, and I was thinking, well, it's all just grass or something like that, it's not edible. Next minute, he's picking out, picking it out, giving us a, an encyclopedic um, <laughs> details about each plant identification sort of thing. And uh, yeah, when you get to try it, they taste so different and so tasty, some of them. My favourite is still pepper dulse. Pepper dulse, it's off of uh, rocks. Uh, it wasn't in the estuary, but it was some, it was on the coastline and it grows on the dark side of the rock. And that is really, really nice. I love that because it's really garlic and chilli. Well worth a watch, well, well worth a see. And you can see it in the first series and you'll see it again in the second series because we've got a load more to cook with mussels. So you can see where you actually get it from and what it looks like as well really worth a watch, like especially his channel, uh, it's called Craig Evans, just type in Craig Evans Coastal Foraging, you'll find it, he's a good guy, really good guy. You can have so many ideas, the best thing to do, this is uh, someone at my film school actually said, get all your ideas, any ideas that pop into your head, if you've got a scrap bit of paper, write it down, chuck it in a drawer, or a book or anything, leave it, leave it, because as soon as you thought of that idea, you think it's the best idea in the world. And you're like, yeah, I'm so passionate, I want to make it. But same with YouTube and camping. You think of these ideas and sometimes they turn out a bit crap. But the nice thing about chucking it away and then looking back at it when you're in the mood or when you're in the zone of creation or doing something, you look at them again and you think, well, that's crap, that's crap, scrap that. And then you look at, you only see the golden gems out of it and then you go forward and make them. And that's the best thing to go back when you're ready. I mean, that, that theory is applicable, or analogy, is applicable to anything really, anything creative, anything you want to do in life. Put on a piece of paper, chuck it, chuck it away, look back at it, see if it's still a good idea or if it's total crap. It's a good system, it works. Way rolling boil! Time for dessert. Right, got me custard. Gonna do the same thing, you rip off the top, open it up. Oh, how long does this take? Only three minutes to do this. Well, it's only custard, isn't it? Oh, all oh, that custardy goodness. Funny story. Uh, when I went Austria as a kid, me and my parents were in a restaurant and uh, 
<laughs> we had apple pie, we're at apple strudel over there. And something, when you ask for custard, they don't have a clue what custard is. I think it's a very unique English thing to say custard because they didn't have a clue. And then it was only on the third day going to the same restaurant because we we're in this hotel out in the middle of nowhere <sighs> that they call it vanilla sauce. And it makes sense because it tastes vanilla, smells vanilla. But some, for some strange reason in the UK, we call it custard. So yeah, for future reference, if you go anywhere in Europe, try and call it vanilla sauce if they look at a, look at you blankly at custard. <laughs> More tea, Vicar. And I don't know if this is a stupid idea, but I've got a galaxy bar. I'm gonna drop that in it, break it up and have chocolate bits. Might melt, might not, I don't know. Oh yeah, sponsored by Galaxy, if only. I'm gonna take all that rubbish out with me. I think I've forgotten a rubbish bag though, which is annoying. Yep, the chocolate's melted, <laughs> especially Galaxy. Seal it up and wait. I didn't really follow the instruction proper, but it's custard, what, what can go wrong? <laughs> searching for uh, camp spots near me but every place I've found is unsuitable and then the other bits of woodland are just they're either game got loads of game on them so I scouted out a wood the other day really suitable looked amazing that was only 10 minutes from me and uh, yeah bloody wild boar came out in front of me wild pig or whatever it was and then full of pheasants and then I was obviously thinking oh these are all game animals sort of thing and uh, yeah then I found evidence of it and then some signs that have been overgrown like keep off game shooting and stuff so I was like well don't want to don't want to get shot so however good that site was uh, I don't think I'll go and use it I don't want to because I don't have the permission for it anyway so I'm in the wrong <coughs> But what I'm talking about is only a quick overnight is to learn, say, feather sticking or or different bushcrafty techniques, which I want to get out and learn. Because to here, where I am now, oh, you bastard! It took me um, an hour and a half to drive, and um, to do it as regular as I would like to, I would like to find somewhere. I'd like to find somewhere really close. Snow's good, makes everything really clean. If I didn't have the snow, I wouldn't have all this water to drink. Thank you, snow. Forgot with custard, you've got to really stir it. Oh, it's got a chocolate swirl in it. Right then, guys, now I'm nice and topped up. Got my head torch, got my work gloves, got my axe and got my saw. I'm going to make an attempt of... Um, doing a fire so you know that uh, fallen dead wood that is leaning a uh, very risky one that is now that we've seen earlier that is now my option two because of just of risk mitigation and all that shite um, I found my option one which is just behind it there's a fallen dead fallen tree and uh, I've just been and checked it now and uh, it's actually dry on the underside so it might be viable but it's all an experiment we've got plenty of time it's 10 to 8 now so may as well get gone that flicker is my torch it's the Olight Nova uh, the biggest one that that torch actually fits in this head strap magnetically and that clips over very good torch very very good lasts a very long time but I've just been using pardon me but I've just been using it a lot. The cold might be getting to it as well. I've left it out in the cold. So, let's get to it. No breakers, no Yeah. Hey. 
miss your voice So there we go. This was option two. It just looked more dry than option one. Uh, I've still got the option one there, that's just when the fire's going. But this, this is amazing. This is exactly what I want. This is worth all the effort. I whittled down, you know that dead standing tree, I whittled it down like a beaver with my axe. Created all these shavings. And then I used my saw, weakened the fibres a bit and then I did like a karate kick and whacked it with my axe and it buckled. It's fine, I got my good chunk. It was like um, this twice and that's all I need. It was a lot of effort though because I, I lobbed off uh, the rotten end bit because that was a bit touching the ground and then I thought, right, do I make the effort of chopping it in the middle? Oh, it was so worth it. It was so quick and easy to make all of this. Now, I'm going to try something that Peter taught me. Forest of Bushcraft, sorry. Forest of Bushcraft, you know we did a collaboration. He taught me how to make feather sticks. Now, to be honest, I haven't tried it since. This will be a perfect opportunity to try it because I've got all the material. It is, it is dry. And I will try it with a striker steel. So, let's get to work. So Peter said, look for ones that don't have knots in. That does have knots in. But I suppose I could do it to just that little bit, but uh, I'd like a bigger run, I guess. There's actually uh, sparkles forming. <laughs> very technical term there. On the tent, it makes it very pretty. For once, I'm proud I've got a white tent in a window wonderland. This one looks good. So I'm going to do it down to this end. There's a big knot there, so I'm going to start here and go to there. I'm going to try and make a few from a track record of last time. I got the gist of it. I did one or two, and it did go, but it wasn't the best. Adjust where you're pulling the piece of wood to a little bit. So I'm angling the piece of wood like this. You're kind of pulling it into no, your belly. Yeah. He said, turn it turn it and look for the ridge. Well, I think I've just beveled my ridge. <laughs> Key to this is a sharp knife. I know my knife is sharp, it's just my skill is wrong. It looks so easy, but you know they've put the time in. Oh, I just lost all my curls. Shit. Oh no! It's like when it catches and goes all the way. Oh, I've got lovely uh, curls to just chuck on. I have bought some char cloth. I don't know if I need to use it or not. But I will try the method of just lighting the stick and let the stick do the job. I will try that first. All right then. Just a quick update. Even though I've processed all this wood, I've made some feather sticks and everything. Super happy with it. Uh, found some sweet corn that I bought with me. I'm gonna have one now. It's about five to 12. I've been pissing about <laughs> doing uh, long exposure photography. You are just a broken starlet in my nuclear vision. I see more repetition. An explosion, then a brand new prize. I've done some uh, feather sticks. I've kept them in a little pouch with some little bits. But I thought it's not it's not worth doing a fire tonight. I won't get the benefit of it. I'm nice and warm in myself. And I'll just have this and a last cup of tea. I'll also boil some of my water. This is starting to freeze, or the tube is or something. Anyway, it's cold and that's not nice to drink. So what I'm gonna do is boil half in there, 
and make some wenchui, which is warm water. So I've just boiled up some more snow in here. I've just been boiling snow, it's been great. It's been fantastic. No need to go for a water source or anything. It means I could have camped over there in that bigger wood over there. But that's for next time. Only when it's uh, snowing though, or I bring more water. Because normally I've got a big reservoir, that will do me right, but I can't use that in winter because it will freeze up. It's not one of these good, good ones. It's just a normal standard bladder. And uh, especially I put a filter in the line and if that freezes, that will break and it's it's just, well, it won't work anymore, will it? <laughs> That's why you've got to buy some sort of um, sheathing to keep it warm. But I can't be bothered with that. I'm not going that long, so that's why I just use a standard water bottle. Cool, we've got a rolling boil. Yeah, I'll have one of these tomorrow. These are so nice. Especially when they're packaged like this, these will last for ages. But I forgot I had these. These are to balance up the, uh, the instant meals because those instant meals, I find they're very acidic. Break it in half, then I'm just gonna plonk it in. Now, do I do that before I make my tea? Yeah, probably. Oh, that's really full. There we go. I have no idea how long they're going to take. So we'll wait and find out. I've been very fortunate tonight. It's been a full moon, really spectacular full moon. And being a bit of an open canopy here, not in that really dark stuff over there, especially with the snow being here. Here it reflects a lot of the light, so you can at least get around without any torches or anything. But I think I've exhausted most of my lighting. This is my last torch, this is a small one, but that's all I need. Snow makes life a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is save all this firewood, all this prepared firewood and have a fire in the morning. Get up a bit early, have a nice fire, warm up because I always find it's colder in the morning because you're just getting going. I'm going to shove on all my layers and everything. Just have it for probably an hour, warm up, probably dry stuff off. I've got a wet arse from sitting down somewhere. That was a bad mistake. Yeah, go from there. Tomorrow I'm on about heading up uh, Wind Hill, up to the Pinnacle. It's not that far up from here now. It's not far at all. So why? Why not? May as well go up to the top, just take a left and then go down. And that should only take me about 30 minutes. If nothing, uh, nothing happens, I'll see you in the morning. So good morning guys, it's a really cold one. It was a bit chill in the night to be honest, uh, but I think that's my camping mat. I'm only using the Thermarest uh, foam mat. Uh, so I think I need a better mat because that's where I felt the cold from, the floor. Woke up this morning, bottom of my trousers are frozen solid. My shoelaces are frozen solid. My socks are frozen solid. Didn't realize they got a bit wet. So I chucked them in my sleeping bag, get them warm, got a bit chill. Chucked them on, got out, ran around a bit. <laughs> it works. And that's why I'm wearing my buff on my head. I know it doesn't look the best, but it works. It works. So uh, it's about 15 minutes away from sun sunrise at eight o'clock. And it's absolutely stunning, the, the landscape, the wonderland. And I'm definitely going to do a fire this morning. I'm really pleased I saved all that firewood for this morning. Don't know, it just occurred to me last night that I'm always colder in the mornings. If 
probably because you're just around camp getting ready and stuff and especially today it's about minus four still there's ice on the trees and all sorts even some of the snow has turned to ice gonna be very treacherous driving back so I'm gonna drive back slow last night before going to bed I put all the wood under the uh, the basher the tarp the poncho and it's still nice and dry so uh, let's go and make a fire I've done a bit of a fire lay just because I had so many splinter shards and stuff uh, makes sense but I only made like one fire stick and then one and a, a bit but I'll have a go with this I don't want to mess around this morning if you know what I mean <laughs> it's cold just letting it go don't want to rush it We have fire! Oh. See the steam rising from my uh, trousers? It's all melting and going away I'm now thinking of making a fashioning a pot hanger to cook in a pot. now with the water left over it's a bit sweet I'll have um, some mint tea again just to warm me up probably try and have two of them I'll probably melt some more snow again not sure how long this is gonna last so I'll probably get that on the gas stove then it's all hands to stations pack up and go it's all good Yeah, hot still.
So I've made a move, I've left camp and I've left it how it was, no trace and all. And it's just stunning views up here. Crazy, crazy amount of views. So I'm making my way up to, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Wind Hill. So I've made it to the pinnacle of uh, Wind Hill. Well, the pinnacle is over there, but I'm actually higher on this stone right here. My main camera is Give Up The Ghost. That's about eight batteries, eight batteries in total. I didn't bring all of them. I normally have like 10 or 12, I think. But uh, yeah, no, it's nice. So uh, I'm just on the GoPro at the minute and uh, it fills in the blanks. <laughs> Absolutely stunning views from up here, but you know what? It's amazing uh, when it's in snow like this, but it's not too cold. It seems like Wind Hill was actually shielding me from the wind coming over this way because um, I was down there, and that forest down there. So there's the dams, and then around here is the uh, Hope Valley. So you drive in there, Hope Valley. And then down there is the uh, cement works, I think. Brickworks, cement works, and then Castle Tent, and then Mom Tour, and all that over there. Pretty location. <laughs> Hello. Well, there we go, guys. We've made it back to the bridge where the car is situated. Beautiful uh, waterfall here, or a bit of a waterfall, but stunning. So different from yesterday. So I've hoped you enjoyed this one guys. Really tested my abilities in the winter and the snow. It wasn't as challenging as I thought. I didn't need all my layers. I didn't wear my coat at night because I was warm enough doing all the the activity. I guess if you sit around camp all the time, you, you'll need all the layers you need. But uh, it was really nice. Uh, something that was a change was this buff around my neck. That makes life hell of a lot easier just uh, stops the wind and you can put it around ears and nose. The one thing I didn't account for is that I will get a wet arse. So when I went to bed, um, it was on my outer trousers and then it was on my thermal layer on the inside. So obviously I took them off to go in the sleeping bag because I didn't want the moisture inside the sleeping bag. It froze overnight. So please let me know what you think about this episode by like, commenting and sharing. And uh, stay tuned to join the expedition. Thanks guys.